Just to start with, uh, with energy prices, this is just a simple chart of the futures prices on, on WTI crude futures. And we can see over $90 a barrel, which is at a, almost a 12-month high. And that can lead to inflation expectations moving higher. Now, we already can see that in the bottom right with the most recent inflation numbers we had going May, June, and July. We were in that 0 0.1, 0.2, annualizing near that 2% Fed target. And then we had this blowout in August, which was 0.6. A lot was from the energy move higher. Yeah. But the market expected that, and it's, it's pretty easy to see energy prices at, at the tank and be prepared for where, at least on the lagging data that comes out on inflation, to know you're going to see some hot numbers. And, and the Fed does, they try to extract this with the different types of CPI, so they're trying to, to mute this. But a lot of people, I think, rightly call uh, an increase in energy prices a, a consumer tax. Uh, because it's really embedded in everything. Whether uh, you're at the pump or not, doesn't matter. All of your goods that you're getting have to be shipped. Uh, so it's such an integral part to the economy that we see these prices show up throughout the entire index, not just on energy prices. Right, because just the energy alone is only 7% of the index. But like you said, it's going to flow. It's going to flow through to the input cost of food pretty, pretty directly, too. Right. And we can look at what you just said, which is but acting as a tax. So the, the red line of this chart is gasoline as a share of disposable income. And we pulled this chart back out about over a year ago when the last time energy prices were spiking and really showed that at least historically, because the chart goes back to the 60s, we are at a, a low part for the expenditures of gasoline. Obviously, taxes go up, it's not, not a good thing. Right. So you're still going to be a negative for the economy when, the, when this does rise, but at least historically speaking, it's not something that's off the charts, right? And it does tend to, to move up higher before recession and during recession, as shown by the chart. The one that's actually probably more troubling to the consumer is actually the interest rates, which is the black line, interest payments which is approaching historical highs. And, and being that energy has that relation with, with inflation and inflation with the Fed is related to interest rates, it's not surprising to see uh, these things at least move together. You could say that energy causes a recession because inflation goes up and the Fed raises interest rates, which causes a recession. Uh, and, and we really haven't seen that uh, effect yet. Uh, we have interest rates being raised while oil prices were kind of low. Uh, or. or at least certainly coming off of those uh, those price to a much higher point. Uh, so it's it's something that you just want to put an asterisk on and, and walk for sure.